Hi, we're here doing the backstage interview for the Metals Investor Forum. Uh, we are with Morgan Lextrom of uh, Silver Hammer Mining, and uh, we're going to dig a little deeper into uh, what has been going on at Silver Hammer. Thanks for being here, Morgan. Thanks for having me again at the Metals Investment Forum and uh, allowing me to speak to your audience. Absolutely. So why don't we get started with uh, a sort of a quick overview. You've got three significant projects at Silver Hammer in some great jurisdictions. Maybe you can first give us an overview on that to, to start with. Yeah, absolutely. So you talk about great jurisdictions, Idaho and Nevada in the Western US are some of the best jurisdictions in the world. I mean, rated by the Fraser Institute, rated by, well, investors and people in general. And in, in, in our projects or in areas, let's start with Silver, Silver Strand. I know it sounds like Silver Hammer, very similar, but uh, Silver Strand is in that Coeur d'Alene district, right? So that's where Lucky Friday, that's where, you know, that monster mine, Lucky Friday, that's where Heckle and Coor got their start. This is an area that is known prolifically for starting monster silver companies. And we're in it. We're, we're 40 minutes outside of, uh, outside of Coeur d'Alene, which is still the base for Hecla. Uh, Lucky Friday, Galena, Sunshine. There are all these monster mines went down to 1800 plus meters. We have a past producing mine that only ever mined up 90 meters into the mountain and had never been tested below. So the idea is test the thesis. Well, is there mineralization there? Then we connected the whole district. So a five and a half kilometer strike started sampling it. Not only were we getting high grade silver and gold, but we're getting it consistently along strike. We're like, wow. This is pretty exciting. I mean, this is something they missed. And you know, you know, and it's really easy to miss this because there weren't logging roads, there weren't ways, and all was overburdened, it was all covered, right? So we're drilling there right now. We're proving the thesis that there's still gold and silver mineralization that commonly get richer as they go down in depth, like significantly richer. So that that's the thesis we're going with. You know, one of those veins produced 50 million ounces back in the day. So there's huge size potential with silver strand. And then it lies in Silverton, our Nevada assets. Those are also past producing mines, a little older, a lot, a lot older, <laughs> like uh, 1868. Wow. You know, Eliza was part of the historic Hamilton district. That, that area produced a significant amount of silver in a very short time. So it was ultra high grade. It, it had them, it still has the makings of another massive district like Walker Lane, Carlin. I think there's a, there's a large potential there. Not only do we see silver grades that are very high, we're seeing copper grades that are very high, lead, zinc. And, you know, as we were talking about in our last presentation and our Q&A session, these metals are integral to the survival of humanity, but also the green revolution. So, you know, we're looking at how do we build these into mines in the future? How do we build a leading mining company? And that, you know, with our last asset and the last but not least, Silverton, another silver with gold potential. So, you know, we got three solid shots on net. Fantastic. To, for the hockey, <laughs> hockey, the hockey people fans. <laughs> right. And um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if I remember right, uh, the uh, the district where Silver Strand is has historically produced over a billion ounces. 1.2 billion wow. ounces out of that district. Lucky Friday is still going. They're at 1,800 meters depth. Like wow. These are deep monster, monster mines. The really cool thing about Lucky Friday, which a lot of people don't know, is it actually had a gold cap on it like what we do at Silver Strand. Mm -hmm. So we have gold grades and silver grades, but the really interesting thing is their silver didn't really get rich until, you know, the multiple hundreds of meters. So they kind of capitalized on their gold. They were the largest gold producer back when they first started in Idaho. So it was first known for gold. Yeah. And then for silver. And then lead and zinc, you know, right. like similar to Bunker Hill, some, similar to all these other mines. Right. You know, I'm not a geologist, so I won't pretend to talk about all these, uh, these fun rocks, but sure. you know, it's, we're in the Rivette formation. So we're in the same rocks as them. Um, the likelihood of finding something increases when you're in the same district, in the same rocks, past production, there's grades, good grades there. You know, you, we increase that likelihood to make shareholders money. Exactly. A lot of things going for you uh, at Silver Strand. And so you've been through a phase one of drilling. Can you talk a little bit about what you found? And then maybe you can tell us about what phase two is going to entail. Yeah. So, I mean, for phase one, the idea was, you know, we started the company. I joined in late June. Let's get in and let's drill. And uh, if, you know, people that follow the junior stories, you know, permitting takes time. Finding a drill contractor can take years. We were really fortunate to have a great drilling contractor relationship I, I made with the drilling contractor. We permitted really quick and we're able to rehabilitate our underground and go in there, step out and start testing the thesis of what is below this past producing area. Did they mine it? Is there a reason they stopped? And every, we, we drilled six holes in November in Coeur d'Alene, which it gets a little cold up there <laughs> underground. 
And each one of those holes encountered mineralization. We had 392 grams of silver, 14 meters below surface. Wow. That is a very good grade for 14 meters below surface. We had 8.8 .8 grams gold. We had a 15.5 meter mineralized block of 1.3 grams gold. And we were like, well, wait, that's not a lot. At 14 meters below surface, right. that is significant. That's like, you know, stories like Great Bear were built on that kind of stuff. Sure. I'm not, we're not analogous. Right. I'm just saying, just because we have an underground, it now allows us to do low cost, high impact work instead of blowing the bank, building roads and rehabilitating and going throughout the whole, destroying the, the forest, we're able to do it meaningfully. Exactly. And so now you've started phase two. Correct. And uh, can you tell us how far along you are and uh, when that might wrap up and when we'll see some news flow? Absolutely. So phase two is a continuation of phase one. We want to keep testing deeper. We want to keep testing, you know, outer extrudes of the, of the potential uh, mineralized zone. Excuse me. And, and the idea there, I'm using my hands a lot, so don't get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea there is, is to start proving that mineralization continues. Right. You know, again, back to the Lucky Friday model, it was an ultra high grade on surface. We are significantly higher than what they were producing at back in the day. Now we have modern technology. We have, you know, what I consider mineable widths and mineable grades. Now this, this turns into, you know, a larger story quick. Once we start connecting surface, we start connecting that deeper story. And that's what we're doing with this, uh, this drilling program. We, we should be finished this week. Wait, Saturday, next week. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes forget the day. No, uh, uh, early next week and looking to get catalysts out from that um, end of September, early October, as well as from our other projects. Super. Um, so, and infrastructure is a big thing at Silver Strand, yeah. given the history of that, uh, that district and, uh, the potentially faster, uh, road to production. Am I right? <laughs> You're right. Yeah. No, I mean, there's a mill close by owned by New Jersey mining. They actually used to process the ore that came out of the past mm -hmm. production area. So the metallurgical recoveries are there. We know that the mill works for it. It's permitted. It's kind of new tailings dam that can be built. So there's a lot of positives to that. And, and, and having, being in Coeur I mean, the, we were talking about this early. It's a multi-generational mining town. I mean, there's people that have been in mining longer than my family's been in Canada. Like, <laughs> it's insane, yeah. the, the talent. I mean, yeah. the human capital requirement to build a mine is right. intense. And, and you have to have skill. Well, there, there's plenty of skill and plenty of very strong mining families in that district. So it, it definitely leans heavily towards building something big there. Right. I mean, look at what Bunker Hill's going back into production. Sure, sure. You know, Lucky Friday's just down the road. They're still in production. There's backhaul routes. There's a lot of catalysts there that line up to make it, you know, I consider like low capex production potential. Fantastic. Potential. So, right. <laughs> Let's switch gears and talk a little bit about the other assets. Uh, there was Eliza, you mentioned. Yep. And Nevada. Maybe yep. you can tell us a little bit about uh, where that stands and where that's headed. Sure. So we, we picked up Eliza, past producing uh, silver mine in the 1800s. Um, it, it was on the, the bottom side or the, the southern side of Treasure Hill. So that was that high, high uh, capacity uh, mine back in the 1860s. So we, we picked up the, the area below. We expanded the land claims and we started seeing, wow, there's great silver grades. There are 1,500 grams silver, 1,400 grams silver. But with each one of these samples, we're picking up like, wait, six, 8% copper, 10% lead, 10% zinc, sniffs of gold. And, you know, when you have experienced uh, man, like board team, like I do that are strong geology, they look at that and go, okay, there's something big going on there. So we ran a soil sampling program and those results should be coming out soon to show the potential scale there. Okay. And so finally, Silverton, tell yeah. us a little bit about that. So we did the, we did the base level work on Silverton to get it ready to, for drill. So it is now drill ready. We're permitted there to drill. Um, not only are we looking at the potential silver targets at Silverton, uh, Silverton, <laughs> there's actually a gold target there that, that is very similar and analogous to Round Mountain. Okay. So very poorly welded tufts. Um, the infrared aster is very similar. So, you know, it, it gets exciting as a company when you're trying to build a, an actual mining company, but you have three high potential mines or past producing mines and you go, okay, wait. The best place to find a new mine is where an old mine was. And these are real old mines, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, with big histories and, uh, and obviously a lot of potential. So it's certainly going to be interesting to, uh, to watch how things develop over the next weeks and months. And I'm sure a lot of eyes are going to be on uh, news from Silverhammer. Yep. Let's, let's, uh, we're going to keep it, per, uh, keep it moving forward. And I'm really looking forward to getting the results from Silverstrand and showing 
the large scale potential there in that district. We look forward to it. Thanks, Thanks Morgan. Thanks.